Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Uh, today we're going to be going over a really strange one, uh, one that you may have found in your travels and not known quite to do with, what to do with, and that is called the Spell Steel Bearded Axe. The Spell Steel Bearded Axe seems to be almost specifically designed for any character to use, and comes with a wide variety of uh, charges that can be used by, well, just about anybody. Um, let's go over the weapon itself, and we'll talk about the statistics, and uh, we'll get into the nitty-gritty of the charges as well. Uh, so right off the bat, you'll notice that it is a bearded axe, which is a nightmare-level axe. Um, it is 55 to 129 damage, uh, which isn't too bad for a two-handed weapon at level 39. It has an extremely low strength requirement of 37, uh, but that is in due to the fact that it has a huge negative requirements of negative 60%, which is kind of insane. Uh, we also have a 10% faster cast on here, which actually will come in handy later on, as you'll see. Uh, but for a melee character, you know, you don't necessarily need faster cast, so it's interesting that it's on a weapon. Uh, we also have 165% enhanced damage, which is, does not vary, which is also strange for Nightmare and Elite level items. Uh, generally, the enhanced damage will usually vary by anywhere between like 30 to 60%, some of them as much as 70 or 80%, depending on the item, but this item doesn't vary at all. Uh, we also have a massive bump in mana for level 39 that could be literally all of your mana. Um, uh, 100 mana bonus. And then we get a very nice 25% regeneration to mana as well. Um, so very mana-centric item just in general. And we come to the only variable on the item, which is the magic damage reduced by. Um, it varies by 12 to 15. So if you find a 15 spell steel bearded axe, you have found a perfect spell steel bearded axe. Uh, then we have these crazy charges. So uh, the weapon has a whole bunch of charges on it, and they all do various things. Um, some of them seem useful, and some of them not so much. Like the level 12 Firestorm, um, I'm not really sure how that would ever be useful. Uh, Firestorm is not really that good of an ability to begin with. It doesn't go very far. And at level 12, it only does like 51 to 59 damage. So even at level 39, when you put this on, it's just not going to be very useful. Now, granted, you could synergize it on, like, a elemental fire druid, but at that point, wouldn't you rather just be using the native skill? Um, it's a little it's a little odd. Uh, we also have level 10 Holy Bolt, and uh, the level 10 Holy Bolt doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. Um, unsynergized Holy Bolt isn't really that great, so it does about 84 to 94 damage magic, and it heals about 19 to 42 the only real plausible reason I could see to use this is not to attack with, but maybe to, like, um, specifically try and prevent your mercenary from dying or something. Maybe you could fire off a couple holy bolts at him or something. But that would also mean that you would have to have this weapon on. Um, and, uh, and if you don't have the weapon on, well, you're not going to get the, 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 the effects. Now, it does give you a, a rather healthy number of them, so you literally have a hundred Holy Bolts, which is kind of insane. And, uh, I mean, at the very least, you certainly won't run out anytime soon. I mean, as you can clearly see, like, you can sit here and spam them for quite some time, and I'm still only down to, like, 75. Um, granted, if you had some more faster casts, you could obviously spam them a little bit quicker, but uh, it really depends on what you're trying to use this weapon for. Uh, now we come to the actual good charges. So the first good charge on this weapon is the Decrepify spell. Um, so this is one of the only items in the game that actually gives you Decrepify. And um, it's actually a level 3 Decrepify, so it actually lasts 5.2 seconds, which is better than some of the other lower level, like level 1 Decrepify spells. And um, when you're utilizing this, um, you can usually get some pretty good benefit out of it. Um, let me go ahead and, and grab some potions here so I don't die while I'm trying to do this. And, uh, you know, if you're going through uh, an area and you happen to come across, say, a physical immune monster, um, you could always curse the monsters with Decrepify and, uh, you know, start wailing away. Um, and, it, and in this way, you know, you basically have the ability to, you know, apply a Decrepify curse. Now, the big downside, of course, of Decrepify is how short the duration is. So despite the fact that it gives you 30 charges, I could realistically see maybe burning through all 30 charges in a relatively short period of time, um, which isn't necessarily the best. Uh, but Decrepify, having a castable Decrepify on command can actually be, like, amazing to make your character just, you know, uh, 
able to burn through those uh, those unique monsters, those elite monsters that are immune to physical damage. All right, and then we also have one more charge on here, which is the teleport charges. Um, so the teleport charges are probably one of the best things on here, um, and unfortunately there are only 20 of them, but you can use them to skip by areas. Like say I was um, a melee character who just didn't want to do the causeway, which which is a pretty uh, you know standard thing when it comes to melee characters and, and characters in general. People like to skip the causeway. Well, there you go. I used uh, nine charges to skip the causeway. Now I am floating around in Chaos Sanctuary getting my butt kicked. Um, if I wanted to take it further, of course, I could teleport to the uh, to the the star. Now, of course, the interesting thing about this is that you can also find it in the ethereal form, and um, unfortunately, the charges I don't think can be repaired. Now, I had a couple people um, who constantly tell me that they, oh, you could repair charges on ethereal items. You just have to use the recipe. Well, I've tried the recipe before, and we're going to try the recipe together today. I'm going to go ahead and spam some of these teleports so we can uh, we can get a good idea of whether or not it can be repaired. And I'm going to spam some Decrepify as well. I'm going to have to borrow some runes and some gems from my uh, solo self-found Necromancer. So the recipe um, for repairing an item um, and recharging the item are two different recipes. And before we get into that, let me just cover the ethereal version real quick. So the ethereal version is uh, 82 to 193 damage instead of uh, 55 to 129. It has 27 strength and it's level 39. Uh, 27 strength is like absolutely nothing. Most characters can utilize that even without putting a single point into strength, which is kind of crazy. Um, and then the other thing, of course, about the ethereal item is that you can't really repair the charges, uh, which is a big downside of this particular weapon because, quite honestly, it just doesn't, like, there's no reason to have it or use it if you're not going to be utilizing the charges, really, unless you just really didn't have any other weapon to put on your character. But usually by the time you get to level 39, you've got something else, like, lined up at that point. Um, let's borrow a Chippy Chippy from my solo self found necromancer and um let's also borrow one of his runes he has um i believe i need a ral rune or an ort rune which one is it uh, for weapons it is an ort rune um so let me go grab an ort rune from my necromancer i'm sure he can i'm sure he can spare one ort rune he'll be fine This isn't even actually the one that I'm playing. The one that I'm playing is on live. This one is uh, is behind by quite a bit. This save file is old. All right, so we're going to grab two Ort runes for the purposes of repairing these. I want to show you guys how this works. Um, and you can do this with any item um, except for amulets and rings. Amulets, rings, um, actually I think you no know, gloves works because it's under the armor. Boots works because it's under the armor. Um, the only ones that don't seem to work in any kind of recipe is amulets and rings. You can't recharge them via the recipe for it, uh, with amulets and rings uh, because it doesn't fall into either of the two categories, which is armor or weapon, and uh, it's, it's unfortunate. Let me steal another one of these chippies. Uh, first, I'm going to show you that it works. Then I'm going to show you that it doesn't work with the ethereal item. Uh, so right now we have a spell steal with uh, level one teleport, level three decrepify. Um, are both burned charges? Let me move myself out of the way over here. All right. So to repair the um, the non-ethereal one, um, we're going to obviously put the chip gem in there. Dang, my nose is acting up this morning. Uh, we're going to put the chip gem in there, and if you hit transmute without the uh, ort, it doesn't do anything. Um, it has to have the ort in there. Um, you put the ort in there, and uh, you will notice that we'll go from 4 to 20 charges uh, for teleport, 24 to 30 charges under Crapify, 63 to 100 on Holy Bolt, and 12 to... Or sorry, uh, we didn't use up any of the Firestorm ones because I already repaired them. Let's go see real quickly just um, how much money I would be saving. I'm not actually going to repair it. Uh, so 103,556 gold is how much I'm going to save. 
uh, by doing it this particular way. And then when you transmute it with the Oort and the Chip Gem, um, it will repair all the charges on the item. Notice now I have full charges for Teleport, full charge for Decrypify, full charge for Holy Bolt. Um, if we take the same thing, and I've done this before, and I and I hope I'm, I don't got egg on my face, but I've tried to repair the charges via the recipe before, and it hasn't worked. But let's see. Um, so we've got the zero teleport charges, eight decrepify, and uh, as you can see, it doesn't work with the ethereal item. Um, let me try just the chip. Um, as you can see, ethereal items cannot be repaired using the recipe. Um, and uh, people love to point out in chat, but you can repair the ethereal items with the recipe. And I'm like, no, you can't. You can't repair the ethereal items. So let's give my poor uh, solo cell, cell found necromancer back his runes. <laughs> um, which does unfortunately put quite a damper on the spell steel in its ethereal form, uh, because basically it's not really that good as a weapon, but it is very good as a charge item. And uh, and the, the the big downside, of course, of it is that well, if you're using it as a charge item, well, you can't repair the charges. So the spell steel ethereal version is basically useless to you. Uh, but it has to be judged almost entirely on its merits as a physical weapon at that point, and not a um, not an actual item that you would use for casting spells. Um, we can, of course, upgrade the spell steel beater dax, which we're going to do. Um, so the spell steel braided axe can be upgraded uh, from the um, exceptional form to the elite form using a Paul alum and a perfect emerald. Um, and this is going to take us from 55 to 129 damage, 37 strength, level 39, to the spell steel silver edged axe of 164 to 291 damage, 26 dex, 67 strength, still extremely low in the requirements, uh, level 55. And uh, it's actually not bad for level 55. Uh, the ethereal version can also be upgraded from uh, 82 to 193, 27 strength, level 39, to 246 to 437, 16 dex, 57 strength, level 55. Um, now, if you combine the fact that this has decrypify charges on it, the fact that it can beef its own damage up, essentially, um, it's actually not bad. Um, you know, you can basically rip off physical immunities, and you can also bring down monsters by 50%, essentially whatever you want. 30 charges of Decrepify is actually pretty good, and any time you come across a monster that needs a little uh, slowing down or a little bit of extra damage on, you tap a couple Decrepifies up. Um, you could also use this relatively nicely on bosses to prevent them from teleporting around. Uh, if you guys are unaware, Decrepify will prevent Bale from teleporting around the throne room. And you could also use this on Diablo, Duriel, or Andariel to great effect to slow them down as well if they're giving you a little bit of trouble. Um, and at level 39 for the original version, you could certainly use it throughout most of the game. Level 39 is actually before you leave normal difficulty. Um, and level 55 literally is nightmare difficulty. So you can literally be using this weapon in both of its forms well before you get to hell difficulty. And having a teleport um, all, all by itself is probably the greatest thing here. Now granted, you could go to level 24, you could go and shop yourself a teleport staff, but uh, I feel like this is kind of a little bit better since it has the Decrepify charges on there as well. So you have basically a teleport slash Decrepify stick, um, which would be great for a character who relies mainly on physical damage. Like if you are a uh, paladin, a barbarian, a um, not a necromancer, obviously, because they can cast the curse natively. Um, maybe a druid, um, assassin, perhaps. Uh, probably not a sorceress, because sorceresses already have teleport, and they don't really have much use for decrepify, except for maybe to hold a boss down. And um, necromancers, like I said, already can cast decrepify, although they might get good use out of the teleport. It's a, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing here. You know, you have the ability to cast a very nice curse, a very effective curse, and teleport on the same weapon with negative requirements that make it usable by literally any class, and it also includes a little bit of faster cast too, so that when you're teleporting, you can actually teleport out around faster. Now, one of the downsides though is I think the number of curses, number of charges on the teleport. Let me double check my teleport staff uh, that I have on Mortuary. Good day. Um, how many charges does his staff? Thirty-three. So a teleport staff actually does have a little bit, a little bit more charges than a um, than a spell steel. But you are getting the utility of an additional effect, the uh, the teleport uh, along with the decrepify. 
And, uh, you know, if you wanted to you burn some of the Holy Bolt charges to heal your Merc or something, that'd be funny. Uh, get you a little bit of blue confetti. Now, they are level 10 charges, and um, you could theoretically use them on a Paladin. But here's the thing. If you're on a Paladin, um, the charges aren't really going to be very useful to you. Um, and there's a reason for this. If you're building Fist of the Heavens, which is the synergy bonus for Holy Bolt, uh, which gives a pretty massive bonus, by the way, um, you're probably also going to be building Holy Bolt to increase the Holy Bolt damage of Fist of the Heavens. So you're probably going to have a ridiculously high-level Holy Bolt anyway. And, uh, and it just doesn't make any sense to use the charges on the weapon when you could just cast the native ability for far cheaper and, and better. Um, not, even, uh, not even cheaper, but just better in general. Um, I, and in fact, I can't think of any way that you would have a character built where the charges would come in handy on a paladin where casting the native spell would not be. Um, the only thing I can even think of is maybe if you were running, like, prayer and cleansings for the regeneration, but you didn't have any points in Fist of the Heavens or Holy Bolt, and, uh, and you use this to cast, like, healing synergized Holy Bolts, uh, because prayer does give a healing synergy to, um, to Holy Bolt. It's a 20% life per per heal level healed but I, I still really can't see it um let's take a look real quick and see where we could potentially find ourselves a spell steal uh let's go over to silo's pen real quick and uh we're gonna have a look and see um what kind of uh areas we need to go to to uh to locate this and uh, of course my window is all messed up Ooh, la 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 All right, so let's go to unique items, and uh, we're gonna pull up the spell steal. I think you're gonna find the spell steal actually drops from pretty low level monsters. I've actually found quite a few, and sometimes during ladder starts they actually do come in handy as a free um, teleport item. So keep that in mind. Um, let's take a look at bosses first. Um, so as you can see here, we already have some pretty good probabilities, um, even ignoring the quest flags. we got 1 in 680 from Nightmare Anadariel. Uh, we've got 1 in 745 from Nightmare Diablo, and 1 in 771 from Nightmare Bale. Um, all very, very uh, easy, relatively easy monsters to farm. Um, checking out the super uniques. Uh, we've got the Nightmare Cow King, uh, Nightmare Neolithak, Nightmare Summoner. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's a good one here that we can farm easily. Nightmare Beetle Burst is pretty easy to farm, but that one in 7,898 is certainly far worse than Diablo's. Um, Fire Eye in the Palace Cellar, very easy to farm. Dark Elder in Lost City, very easy to farm. Um, I mean, a lot of decent options here. Storm Tree, pretty easy to farm in Lower Kurost. Um... I mean, nothing really in, like, Act 1 normal difficulty. Uh, or, sorry, Nightmare difficulty. We got a lot in the Hell difficulty and a uh, pretty decent amount in, like, Act 2 up from Nightmare difficulty. So it should be pretty, pretty easy to find in Act 2 up. Um, quite honestly, it doesn't look like it's going to be that difficult to find for you guys. So if you haven't found one already, I don't know what to tell you. You probably just got lucky <laughs> uh, in not finding it. Uh, you got the anti-luck. That that uh, that brown that brown four leaf clover. <laughs> you might want to take that out of your wallet, sir. Um, anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when we're talking about a weird axe like the spell steel, um, which is uh, something that we could talk about as well, just really quickly. That it's not spelled spell steel, as in like stealing the spells, which is kind of how I would have expected it to be spelled. It's spelled spell steel, it's S T E E L, as a pun that because of course it's made out of steel and it casts a bunch of spells, uh, which is a little weird. <laughs> anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, if you want to continue watching, be sure to hit that subscribe button.